Hello and welcome to another video from me. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Hoover Keymatic washing machines, some of the most iconic machines made in Great Britain and sold around the world. We're going to take a look inside and out three different examples I own and have a look at some technical components, diagrams and literature. The Keymatic was a very early, fully automatic washing machine and it was operated with a key card with the cycles on. There were no dials or switches. This meant the end of wash day, as it was now a fully automatic process, taking the user considerably less time to do the wash than if they were using a twin tub or doing it even more manually. So as you already know, these machines are operated with a plastic or baker-like keycard with grooves and slots either blanked out or left open. As you press the keycard into the reader, it will activate a bank of switches at the end, which will select to a cycle. There's also one further contact on the end here, which will activate when you push the keycard in fully to start the wash. When the key card's in, the cycle facing out towards you, so for instance whites, this is the cycle that we have selected. There are different key plates, such as those two, for different water intake combinations, and later machines came with two key plates. You had a key plate with your normal wash programs, and you had an extra key plate with things such as your rinse, spin, and heavy soil programs with pre-washers. Each key card has eight cycles on, there's four on each side and two on each edge. These are the three Keymatic models I own. On the left we have a 3224 Hoover Keymatic from 1961 and this is the model everybody thinks of when they hear the word Hoover Keymatic. I also own a Hoover Keymatic 3223, which is the machine in the middle, and this is actually a Greek export variant, and it's from 1970. And on the right is a Keymatic Deluxe model 3243H from the 1972 Matchbox range. We'll take a closer look at these later on in the video. Let's have a look at all the different models then. The first is the Hoover Keymatic 3224. This ran approximately between 1960 and 1964 and was replaced with the model 3226. Very similar machines, both with pulsators in the drum and the unique cabinet design. However, this machine had a circular compass-like indicator, push button door release, and some had a different color scheme. This ran for a few more years before the Keymatic became squarer in the form of the wide body 3203. So the 3203 had a soap dispenser on top, which was new, but this was inconvenient as it meant you couldn't use the hopper if the machine was permanently installed underneath the worktop. So the 3203 was replaced by the 3223, which was the first Keymatic to have a soap tray and the Keymatic had an additional fabric conditioner slot that the standard automatic 3221 did not have. Other than that, the 3203 and 3223 were pretty similar. The 3243H from the Matchbox range replaced this then in 1971, and my machine is the first version of two. The second had orange details and indicator lights, as well as a grey fascia base. These Matchbox series machines were the first standard size cabinet as we know today, that would fit into a standard 85 by 60 by 60 centimeter slot. There was also another model, the A3050 Keymatic Deluxe E. This was the same as the 3243H, but with a brown fascia base and sold exclusively through the electricity board shops, but this was launched later on with the next range of machines. September 1974 saw the Matchbox series replaced by the Aluminium series with the new Hoover Keymatic Deluxe model A3008. The A3050 Keymatic Deluxe E exclusive machine was also launched at this time. 
February 1978 now, and the new new Magic line with the penultimate Keymatic Deluxe 1100 model A3062 was released. This brochure has seen better days. The final model of Keymatic was from the Smoother Hoover line and was the model A3112 launched in the early 80s. Unfortunately, this is the only photo I have. We're going to go outside now and have a look at the actual washing machines, but don't worry, we'll come back towards the end and have a look at all these brochures and manuals in more depth. This is the 3224 then. The machine will hold eight pounds of washing or three and a half kilos and has a blue enamel drum with the unique pulsator at the back which spins in the opposite direction to the drum. This idea has been copied since in the form of the Samsung quick drive machines and I guess you could say the Dyson contra rotator machines. The drum tilts as well when the machine fills up to a more horizontal position. It has a red baker like key plate with eight cycles on it and these are whites, white special, coloureds, minnow mine, delicates and blankets, woolens, pre-wash or rinse and spin only when the machine spins around 740 rpm. Its progress indicator is a joined tape driven by the timer. So this is the 3223. It's a conventional front load washing machine as we know today but in a very wide cabinet which is 68 centimeters wide to be precise. This will hold a nine pound load in a stainless steel drum. The machine has two key plates. The red one is the original Greek key plates. The other is the English one, but it's the second key plate with the further programs on. Its progress indicator is driven by a cam on the end of the timer, which I'll show you later, and it snaps back at the end of the cycle like a hot point top loader. The door is opened by the chrome lever to the right, and if the timeline has moved away from the stop position, the door cannot be opened. As you're aware, this machine came from Greece. I imported it back last spring during England's first lockdown. I don't know quite how I got away with that, both illegally and with the missus. And this is the Matchbox Hoover Keymatic Deluxe Model 3243H. This is my favourite model of all the Keymatics. The machine's had a lot of the components replaced in its time, but it has a story. So the timer and key plate reader have been upgraded for one fitted to a later Keymatic, and the inner drum is not original. Again, nor the outer drum, but I had to replace that because the original was totally rotted out when I got it. Originally, the machine would have had white and grey key plates, like it's sporting now, but it now uses pale honey and orange key plates used for the A3062. This keymatic and the ones to follow have electric indicator lights controlled by a disc on the end of the timer, as I'll point out to you later. But less and less mechanics as time moves on. Before we take the covers off, I'll point out one cool feature on the 3224, and this is this storage compartment for the hoses and the plug at the back. When these machines were launched, many houses would not have had a permanent place for the washing machine to both live and where it was used, so the machine would have to be wheeled to the kitchen sink and used with tap adapters, like this one here. When you're finished, you could tidy the hoses away into the big storage compartment in the back neatly. Let's get the back off and have a look. So in the back then, at the top we've got two inlet valves. These have been replaced with modern three quarter inch ones. The original ones would have been brass and half inch thread size, I think. We've got two pressure switches with two dodgily rooted hoses that I've put in. Um, they need adjusting. At the bottom left, we've got the pump. This is a replacement pump. The original one would have been a lot bigger and bulkier. Um, the original one fitted to my other 3224, which is a German one, that's in dire need of restoration. Um, but that's probably no good, I think it's seized if I remember rightly. You can see in the back we've got a big motor at the bottom, clutches and pulleys and belts. Up in the top right corner we have the timer control unit. And on the left we have the key plate reader which is the same as the one we were looking at at the start of the video. You can see some of the indicator Titan line band in there which is driven by that wire coming off of the timer there. 
and this little metal tongue is an out of balance protection switch. It's very primitive, simply if the drum hits that tongue it will trigger it and knock the on off switch to the off position. I've never seen it happen in person though. I put it back on, I'll activate it from inside so you can see for yourselves. Really simple but effective. So let's have a look at the newer 3223, a lot simpler to get into. There are two screws either side of the lid at the front and the lid is on hinges at the back. Here we have easy access to things such as the timer, key plate reader, valves and pressure switches, as well as an easy way to change the door seal compared to the slant front key matic. Although the soap tray is on the roof, it means you can't run the washing machine when the lid's up, um, so water would go everywhere, so it's not ideal for servicing like that. Let's have a closer look at the components. So this machine is a cold fill only and it's got a three-way valve. The UK3223H had a single hot valve and two cold valves. Sorry, it's dark in this corner of the garage. We've got two pressure switches there. And we have the timer and key plate reader as one unit now on the front of the washing machine. You can see our timeline arm and cam on the end of the timer. The spring switch. And there is also a micro switch so the machine cannot be operated if the soap tray is open. This is the arm and as the cam moves around, it will move the timeline indicator like so and snap back at the end of the cycle. There's also handles either side which is useful for moving the machine to the sink. However, the wheels on this machine are very perished and broken so it doesn't really make much difference. In the back, we have a single pulley and belt driven drum, like a standard washing machine nowadays, with a clutch on the end of the motor. We can see now the heating element, pressure bottle, pump, etc, etc. We have capacitors and shock absorbers either side of the drum. As you can see, they're getting simpler as they get newer. And once again then, the 3243H is further standardised with its build. A removable lid and back panel with no components attached. So here we have the soap tray housing. We have two cold inlet valves for pre-wash and softener. We have a hot valve for the main wash. We've got the pressure switch at the back. We have a relay to take the load of the heating element away from the timer, which burnt contacts out quite easily. We have the key plate reader here at the front, and we have the timer here mounted behind. Originally, this would have been on one unit like the wide body previously. However, as I said, this is for a later model. This is the disc I was on about that controls the Indicator lights on the front of the washing machine's fascia. In the back is even more conventional then, with a single pulley, belt and motor drive. The motor is just a standard brush motor that Hoover went on to use in many of their machines after for many years. Brush motor is controlled by a speed module which is here. You can see the suspension legs, one there. There's one at the front somewhere, you can see there. And another one here, you can see the heating element terminals there. As you can see, it's a lot simpler as it gets newer. Let's start off with a closer look at the Hoover Keymatic 3224 instruction book. So we have the key to washing the automated Hoover Keymatic. very fragile. I'm not going to read this all out, you can stop the video and read the screen, um, we'll be here for days otherwise. So here we have how to use the keymatic, and as I was saying about hooking the washing machine pipes up to the sink of the tap adapters, that's how you would do it. You should also note that on the older ones, the 3224, you had to press a little button in order to release the key plate. Um, the later ones did not have this. 
As you can see, we've got the fascia as well. We've got the timeline indicator, door latch, on off switch, and the key, key plate and key plate slot. Make sure we turn the water off after use. Do not add any more washing powder if it's bubbling up, probably. Then we've got information about the washing process. Thermostatically controlling the water temperature with the heating element as well. Size of the load. The keymatic wash up to eight pounds of washing. Special treatments. How to wash various things and use things such as starch. Installing the keymatic and removing the transit brace or braces. Testing the washing machine after installing and when you get the machine. So here we have the program chart. As I was saying, I did read all of these out. So we've got program one, which is white, uh, which is about 85 degrees. Number two is white special. The white special program does not use the pulsator, um, whereas program one will. Number three is colored, which is about 60 degrees. Four is minimum iron, 40 degrees with pulsator action. Five is delicates and blankets, 40 degrees without the pulsator action. Six is woolens, again, 40 degrees without pulsator. Number seven is pre-wash or rinse. There's no pre-wash compartment with the detergent on it, so you couldn't really do a pre-wash and have detergent as well in the main wash. And number eight is spin dry. Got a few washing hints, and these are the different key plates. So the red key plate the machine came with was key plate A. Uh, which uses hot from hot water from the hot tap, and I have got key plates B and C. I think my German one uses the C key plate, and I've got a B key plate, which we saw earlier in the video. No, nope, no second page, it's just falling apart. Got a little brochure, wash day, just forget it. The automated Hoover Keymatic does it all. Up to now, all sorts of washing machines, ring of washing machines, semi-automatic washing machines, automatic, have taken the backache of wash day. But the Keymatic means the end of wash day itself. With the Keymatic, wash day consists of putting the clothes into the machine, switching on and slipping in a small plate into a slot. That's all. All you do, put clothes in up to eight pounds and the washing powder into the Keymatic. Switch on and slip in the key plate with the appropriate program and slot into the control panel. The Hoover Keymatic now does all switches switches off when clothes are perfectly clean, thoroughly rinsed and damp dry. The eight programs of the Hoover Keymatic have been through that. Presso, presto. The key plate tells the machine which washing program it has to do, as I was saying. We'll have a look at the 1967 Hoover brochure with the first wide bodies in. Move the tripod. I've done that very well, have I? This folds out, so it's going to take several attempts. Choose the Hoover washing machine to suit you, to suit, suit your family's needs and budget. Obviously, we've got a selection of twin tubs, we have single tubs, we have ringer washers. We have the automatic keymatic and the first Hoover tumble dryer, which was just an English electric rebadged tumble dryer. We're just going to skip to the keymatic bit. Keymatic Deluxe, easily the best automatic washing machine in its price range and 10 years ahead in design. This was quite a futuristic 
design at the time. It was no nothing else was like it previously offered on the washing machine market. And I realised we've left out the brochure with the 3226 in, which came before this. Um, is there a date on this? I don't think so. And this brochure's got other products in, such as their famous Hoover steam irons, ringer washers and twin tubs. And again, the other side shows all of the Hoover products in the range. So that's the instruction book for the Matchbox 3243H, the one in the garage. And this is the one the manual that came with my machine. Um, I didn't scribble on it. I didn't tear it. This is as I found. And also on the back, I think... Someone's tried to spell out the word housing. It wasn't me. So what general contents and packaging to come out of the washing machine. Operating instructions. As you can see, the wash program selected is the one sticking out. I've gone through that several times now. We've got the soap tray, which is the same fitted to the previous model, the wide body 3223. Again, one in the garage. Here we have all the different programs. I think there's 16 different programs, four on one side, eight on one key plate, two key plates is 16. So we've got programs, uh, white, fast coloreds, white nylon, minimum iron, non-fast coloreds and delicates. And woolens and blankets on one key plate, the gray key plate, and the white key plate, as I said, this is a secondary key plate with the heavy soil programs on. We've got white's heavy soil, white special, which is delicates white wash, I think. Um, we've got fast colours, heavy soil with pre-wash, drip dry, no spin, programme 4, um, minimum mine, heavy soil, pre-wash, pre-wash on blankets and pre-wash on its own and special treatments with a rinse only. Here is a view of the fascia with the different indicator lights, on-off switches and key plate slots. Do's and don'ts, emergency door opening, and washing hints. Treatment of stains and installation instructions. Again, we've got more notes from the previous owner. Um, not quite sure what they're trying to do there. And again, we have installation instructions for using um, taps if your machine wasn't in permanent place. And we'll have one last look at this brochure with the new Magic Machines in. It's got to go 3060 in, so I figure people are going to want to look at this. Unfortunately, that machine is quite faded on here. Um, let's go up again. So we've got the A3060 Electronic 1100 base machine. Well, it's not base machine actually, is it? Middle of line. We've got the Keymatic 1100 model A3062. Model above this was the A3064 Selectomatic. This worked similar to the Keymatic but had a rotary dial uh, with a program barrel on, and you would press that dial in rather than pulling it out to start, um, which is quite confusing and probably why there's not that many left because it's different and people probably didn't know how to operate it. And yeah, so the base machine would have been this A3110, 3100, sorry, um, Hoover Electronic 800. And it's dual spin, um, not three spin speeds. And uses the oldest matchbox style door and door release by the looks of things. You could still also buy your twin tubs, your peasant single tubs and spin dryers if you absolutely needed to as well. Pack all this down, we can have a look at some exploded diagrams before we wrap the video up. That's not right. Technical difficulties, bear with. So 
So this is out of a spare parts folder um, I acquired not too long ago. This is the model 3224 and 3226. Um, those use the same frame and a lot of components. So they combine the two again. So this is the inner shell assembly and associated parts. Outer shell assembly and frame. So we've got the wraparound cabinet, the door, and the front of the washing machine. So this is the 3224 exploded fascia. We can see we've got the timer control unit. We've got the on off switch there, timeline tape band. I've got one of those upstairs I'll show you. And all the different inserts into the face. You've got the chrome surround, inner blue piece, and more bits and bobs going on there. Got the key plate and key plate reader and a little cover there. So this is one of the timeline tapes. As you can see, it's wound on by this little um, thing at the end with the little teeth that go into it. It goes that way even. And winds on throughout the cycle. And it's just a very fine banding. See where it's joined there, look. Um, we've got one, two, and a third white stop position. So 3226 then, as I said, you can see we've got a circular indicator, as I was on about. Similar timer, same key plate reader I expect. Um, and you've got the A, B, C, different type key plates and part numbers there. Obviously, we've got the door release button inside the fascia, um, whereas the door release of the 3224 was on the actual door panel itself. Here we can see the drum assembly. We've got the heat element down here with a load of nuts, seals, o-rings, and so forth. Joins in the other side of the tub, goes underneath the drum. You can see the nut and bolt washers on the other side. The inner drum basket, drum front, counterweight and bolts. The back with the clutch and bits and bobs going on there, a few hoses. Here we've got the inner drum, we've got the bearing, housing, pulsator, lifters and so forth. And this is the clutch, pulley and assembly. Various belts, circlips, washers, springs. Main motor assembly and gearbox. Again, this is back in the days when you could break things down, motors, pumps, and replace individual bearings and seals. None of that anymore. Pulley equipment. I'm not very interested in a few nuts, bolts, pulleys. The original pump assembly, as I said, you could break things down individually and buy things. You can buy the impeller, for example, or the cooling fan. Nowadays, you just put a whole new pump unit in. This is the water valve and hose equipment. Late. As you can see, we've got the pressure switches. We've got inlet valve at the back. Again, you could break the inlet valves down and buy all the individual coils and seals. Some pose at the bottom here, individual hose clips, and you can see the door seal retaining bands and the actual door seal itself. If you have one of them, give me a message. Got terminal block collect terminal block connectors and amp tags. And now we've got the wide body machines. So this fascia is for the 3223H Keymatic Deluxe, which has the powder tray. You can see the cutout there. This is for well, this top panel anyway, is for the 3203, um, which has the soap hopper on top. See the door splits into individual components again, wheels, soap hopper. The 
So here are the components inside the lid I was on about. Um, so as you can see, that's the key plate reader there and there, both key plates, uh, different colours. Got split apart valves. It's very essential, sorry. Uh, these are components for the timer control machines. And I beg your pardon, the 3221 did not have a powder tray. So here's the drum assembly, a bit more standard this time. We've just got a set of bearings and a normal drum spider and a normal heating element like we see today. Gearbox main motor assembly. Again, you split it all down and replace individual cogs and gears. Clutch assembly, all the models, all white body models use this. Again, drain pump you could split. I've got brand new impellers and things in packets outside in my garage, but I know I'm never going to use them. You just put a whole new one in. A thermal cutout as well. So we've got some shell components. We've got the soap hopper, um, soap tray on the 3223, things like the sump hose, fill hoses, things like that. We've got capacitors and bits mounted on the bottom. Sorry, slide those. And here we have the matchbox machines. So again, the machines I've got in the garage. We've got the lids, removal worktop. You, you, you'll notice as we go through that they're getting a lot simpler. Um, door which splits again, complete door there. The module at the bottom there. Drum assembly. Now the early models had a three leg drum like mine and they've got a different suspension set up to the twin leg ones. Main motor split down. Again, drain pump. We've got some hoses and valves and the soap tray housing. Here we go, sideways again. And here we have the exploded fascia diagrams. As you can see, there's two part numbers for a lot of things because we've got the grey ones. Um, well, maybe this is earlier than that. Um, not sure. And you can see there's the 3236H and the 3235 tyre models included as well. Uh, we've got the A3 double eight in here as well. We've got the A3006, the timer model, um, and the Keymatic Deluxe below. And that's all that's in there on that machine, actually. Hop onto all those now. I think that's a good place to end the video. So, as I said, that's all from me. I'll put links below to the videos of my three keymatic machines working individually, and I'll put links to all the other models as well. If you have questions you'd like to ask, then feel free. If you want to add memories, then also feel free. If you have one of these machines, parts, or literature you could be looking to pass on, then also feel free to send me a message. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Goodbye.